Welcome to the Model Car Hobby Headquarters Fun Podcast with your host, Luca C. Now, here he is, Luca C. Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? We've got a great guest today. I've been talking to him about getting on here and so glad to have him. We have Art Lasky right over here. Hey, Art, how's it going? Glad to have you back on or back on, finally on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's taken a little while to get this on, but thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to it. Oh yeah, me too, big time. And you know, we we met over up at the, at the NHRA Museum show there and you were in that mm -hmm. video there. So people kind of kind of already sort of met you then, but, uh, and they saw your great display there you had because you were set up at the, uh, at the show there selling your stuff. You have a neat, yeah. uh, Neat things in the hobby that you're doing that uh, why I wanted to have you on here is you're doing some great stuff here in the, in the uh, south, the southwest and uh, probably going spreading through across the country. Hey, eh? a little bit. Yeah. You know, we're getting a little bit of traction here, you know, um, having some fun and yeah, really enjoying it lately. Yeah. And so, I mean, first of all, you know, this is all about model cars. What brought you into model cars? You know, I'm one of those guys, you see this story a lot, you know, where I was into models when I was a kid, you know, I started building models when I was like five years old, you know, my mom got me a model for my birthday, it was a model that was way over my head, and she kept saying, wait for your dad to get home, wait for your dad to get home, you know, I didn't wait, I glue bomb that sucker, you know, um, and ever since then, I've just loved models, and so I did models up until, um, you know, I was a teenager, uh, but really in a vacuum, you know, in my garage at my house, you know, and didn't really have a lot of um, influences or, you know, a lot of ways to get better when I was a kid. It was just all kind of trial and error back then. But, um, you know, and then life just sort of you, you get other interests. And, you know, I was doing a little go kart racing as a teenager and stuff. So, you know, models kind of took a back seat. But I always dragged my stash around with me, you know, for years I had, you know, models. Oh, cool. You know, for just things that I wanted to keep, you know, for years. And then, yeah. Um, and it wasn't until I got to about 40 years old, I wanted to get back into models. And uh, what really inspired me, I happened to be on um, just on the Internet and I saw some models that Clay Kemp had done of some open wheel cars. Mm. And, you know, I had basically grown up in an open wheel family. So I was just amazed by, by those models, you know, they were nothing like what I was doing as a kid. You know, I used to do some of the monogram sprint cars when I was a kid and stuff, but to see his just blew me away. And I didn't jump right back in at that point, but I, I like subscribed to scale auto just to get a taste of what was going on. And then, and then uh, about two years after that, I just decided to make it a hobby, started buying tools and just went for it, you know? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And Clay Kemp does have a, his models do have a way of doing that to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He Pretty can amazing. be inspirational. Yeah. You see that yeah, after, funny. after what you thought the hobby was all about and you see that kind of stuff and go, Oh, wow. This is a lot more yeah. advanced than I thought it was. Exactly. And you know, when I saw his models, I went, I want to do that. You know, that is what I want to do. You yeah. know, I want to up my game and be that kind of a builder, but I didn't know where to start. You know, I went to my yeah. sprint car kit and, you know, just kind of just bought a bunch of tools and, you know, tried to learn as much as I could, you know? Yeah. Uh, I bought, uh, I bought the Don Yost DVD on airbrushing, you know, mm -hmm. and bought an airbrush and, watched him and kind of you know got to see somebody actually doing it you know oh yeah that so makes a world of difference that was a really good foundation for me you know i i got that dvd before i even um finished my first two models you know and so i was able to apply that you know and it it really really got me going you know to getting a good paint job you know so yeah, and the rest to just kind of jump into it, you know. I uh, I happened to be at my at my local hobby store, and they had a flyer up on the 
window, it said um, Temecula Valley Model Club. Ah. Like, what is that? You know, I'd already started a couple models, you know, or at least one. And so it, it said, you know, what time they're meeting and stuff. So I kind of just kind of crept in there one Saturday, you know, like, what is this all about? You know, I poked my head in and I'm like, come on in, you know, you build models. I go, yeah, yeah. Um, it's in the car. You want to see it? And I'm like, yeah, go get it. You know, so it was kind of my whip, you know, of my first model. And, yeah. Um, so that was good, too, because I got a lot of exposure to right away to guys that were building other genres and stuff, you know, and got to just you start to get to learn a lot, you know, get tipped up on different things. And and uh, and then it kind of leads me to you in a way, because I was at the hobby shop there and I had seen Model Cars magazine and uh, uh, there was an ad in there for the show in San Diego. And you and I have kind of chatted about this a yeah bit. yep yep i know what you're getting to now i had no idea what a model show was like this was probably march i think that show was going to be in yeah august or something i think and, so uh, yeah so there's many months before but i'm like san diego i i can go to that that's close you know but i'm like what is this going to be like is it going to be like a bunch of like a star trek convention is it gonna be a bunch <laughs> of nerds yeah there? What, what is this you know uh um, so finally the day comes and I go down to that show and, uh, man, it just blew me away. You know, the level of builds that yeah, were that, down there. That, that show. was a great show. Um, your buddy, Frank Bennett was down there yeah. with his models. And I, I looking at that stuff, I didn't take any models. I just went to go see what it was all about, you know? And, uh, I was a little intimidated after that, to be honest, yeah. you know, didn't know. <laughs> yeah. There were some heavy hitters at that one. That was a really great show i hated to see it mm -hmm. uh, well it, it it ended up moving right yeah it moved yeah, yeah. it moved and then it went away yeah and um i actually was going to take that show over uh from its new location but things just didn't work out so we we just let it go but yeah i went there to i went there to sell i was uh, mm -hmm. i had my resin casting business at the time and i Mm -hmm. I picked up a certain line that uh, I was going to be carrying and I was going to go to all the shows in the Southwest and sell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's how you met me. Yeah. The first because, time, uh, huh? You had some, you had some protect stuff, you know, yeah. and other parts and some of your parts. And so I bought a few things from you just because I thought they were cool. I had no idea what I would use them for. And then I thought I would see that stuff at every show around here in Southern California, you know? Yep. And, uh, and it was supposed it just, to happen. <laughs> yeah. But at that show, I, you know, there was like, you see, when you register or go to the front, there'll be flyers for the next shows, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I grabbed one and, and then just went on tour and haven't stopped since, you know? Oh yeah. I know there that's back then too. That what, that was like, uh, Oh, I want to, I can't remember what that was. 2009. Nine. Yeah. Oops. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was about 2009. And, uh, when I left that show, what ended my business while you never saw me again is in the middle of mm -hmm. the night, in the middle of the desert, my car engine blew up and, uh, oh, losing no. my car. And I was carless for a while after that. It, it kind of, and, and it just, all the money I made, it just, it wiped you know, to get back home and everything, it wiped all my profits away. And I was going to try to yeah. get back into, into doing it. And just like you were saying, life, one thing after another, after another, it actually created, you know, the mm -hmm. things that happened in that year ended up uh, causing me to have to shut down my business too. So that's where the resin casting ended and everything. It, it things got really bad. Those, those, it was like between 2009 and 2011 and you know we had the crash economy crash mm -hmm. and that didn't help yeah, either yeah. i was out of work and uh, yeah, yeah that didn't work out for me so that's why you didn't see me anymore you know i i vanish off the face either so uh you mm -hmm. you picked up the torch and ran with it huh yeah well you know i figured out how to order protect stuff you know and it wasn't an easy process you know uh, i don't then, know no. if you've ordered off of protex website that you have to download the form you know print it fill it out mail a check you know and then you get your parts a couple of weeks later and so um 
I loved Protec parts. And so I just happened to call up Charlie at Protec one day and um, just asked him if he had a dealer program or anything, you know? And he goes, yeah. well, yeah, I do, you know? I said, okay. So it was about 2014. I, um, I just decided to, you know, start carrying it at some of the local shows, you know? So, yeah. Good thing. Uh, so yeah, I was really just started off with Protec and I would just, you know, go around and sell that, that stuff. And it, it was, it was fun more than anything else. You know, I didn't really, I don't know that I ever really covered my table fees when you take out travel costs and, you know, Oh, I know. And I know. Stuff, you know? Uh, but uh, it kind of led to other things. And, you know, now we've kind of got a whole lot of products and I would go to shows, you know, and people say, well, do you have a website? I'm like, nah, I don't have a website. You know, I just go to the shows, but then I thought, well, hey, maybe I should have a website, you know? So I put one together and, you know, some, kind of one thing led to another. And so we got a little, now we got a little business going. That's awesome. And it's a needed thing. Uh, I know if I would have been able to keep it going, it, it was definitely, you know, the couple of shows that I did, everybody's real happy about it. They like that kind of stuff. And that's great that you picked up. And I, I heard about you doing that. Thought that was cool. Cause you know, I kind of dropped out of the whole scene and hadn't been to shows in California in years. And Slowly mm -hmm. getting back and, you know, started the YouTube thing. I think the uh, first time your name popped up was, I think, during a Selvino. You, were you on a Selvino's uh, show or something like that? Didn't you go on to a JR, uh, Selvino's JR, uh, one of the Facebook shows? Yeah, I've been on a few of them uh, with those guys. Yeah. You know, I saw their ads when they first started placing ads for the gray ghost you know and yeah i, I thought that was thing because they were i think at the time they said they were like in chino or corona or somewhere not too far from me you know? right and so so i called them up and i ended up talking to rick you know and just kind of see what they were about you know and and um you know he said well you could be a dealer you know i'm like great you know so i i wanted to help them out they were american company they were local just getting started i thought that would be really cool even though yeah. i wasn't really sure how the nascar genre was going to be you know there aren't a whole lot of nascar builders in my area you know yeah so. or here yeah but i thought it would be fun anyway so i just you know i try and carry their kits and sell them when i can because because i think they're cool you know i think they're doing a yeah. good thing it's a neat thing that they're doing that's why i'm heavy into supporting them and uh, mm -hmm. become good friends with those guys. They're great guys and, and they're doing a neat thing and the whole mm -hmm. made in the USA thing, uh, something we need today. So, yeah, Rick's pretty local to me too, you know? So, uh, I've been able to avoid paying shipping. He just meets me, you know, that's cool. Chat. That if helps. You know, Rick, if you know, Rick, he likes to talk. So we end up talking a lot, you know, and getting yep. to know each other. So it's been, it's been nice. It's been fun. Yeah. He's got some stories. I like, I like jaw jacking with him. We, and then we have, you know, yeah. another interest him and I have is the music. So we get into those stories too. We start talking about that stuff. So him and I can be on the phone for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like talking to him. Right. Right. But yeah, I definitely, I, that's yeah, why I'm so into supporting those guys. I like what they're doing and that's how I heard about you and heard that, you were carrying the ProTech stuff and I just, mm -hmm. and then on and on. I also heard about you from mm -hmm. some of the local guys here who met you like, like BG. Had, oh, Art Lasky. And, and that you put on a show in Southern California too. So you're just, yeah. you're into it all. You're, that's, that, that's great. You're doing so much for the, uh, for the hobby on this side of the country. And, uh, and so, and BG, I guess is that the first time you and BG met was up in Vegas? No, actually, um, he came up to me at the Desert Scale Classic a few years ago. Oh, okay, yeah. And introduced himself to me, and I remembered him, and then I started seeing his videos, you know, and that kind of refreshed my memory. I've been going to that show for a lot of years now because my mom lives over in Arizona. And oh, okay. I got an aunt and uncle and cousins over there, so... I try and hit that show every year, you know, been a vendor over there. And oh, I think cool. that's where he came over to me the first time. And so got to know a lot of guys over there, you know, Chuck's hobby yeah. spot. He, yep. you know, Chuck. Met yeah. him a few years back. And yeah, that's, so, that's yeah. how, I, that's where your name started buzzing. And I, I checked you out and it's like, that's really cool what you're doing. And, and the fact you got that, that my, I'm all for anyone who 
is trying to do something to grow the hobby locally or mm -hmm. regionally and putting on model shows, selling parts like that and, and making yourself a good business out of it. And just thought that's really cool. And that's when I finally got to meet you face to face was at the NHRA museum, mm -hmm. which that was a, that was a blast of a yeah. show. I, I, I hadn't been to, yeah, that's but I went to it a couple years ago and was, and that was the first time I had gone mm -hmm. to a Southern California show, California show in years. I always love going and, and hanging with all those guys. And, uh, mm -hmm. It's always such a good time over there. I'm glad to hear that there's more shows starting to happen again there. Yeah, I really didn't plan on getting into the show promoting business, but um, uh, a guy named Chris Hale out here was doing the, he called it the SoCal NNLs out at the Rancho San Antonio Boys Home. Yeah. And some guys from the big car show had come in and said they were from the LA Roadster club and they have a big show in pomona at the fairgrounds at the same place where the nhra show is right at the fairplex and um they said hey you want to do a model show and he goes well i don't really want to do it but maybe i can find somebody so he called me and said hey would you be interested in doing a show at the la roasters and i said yeah it'd be kind of fun we had six weeks to put it together oh boy and i'd never done one before so uh and that was really fun we did that for uh, about three years um and it was it was really cool and then what happened though is that we had a really bitching spot inside an air-conditioned vendor building and they were losing money on that show the, the tenants kept declining and so they decided not to rent the vendor building because it was so expensive to run the ac and everything and they said well you can still come but we're gonna have to put you outside and this is the middle of june in pomona i said no nah, i don't think we can do that so we had to shut that down but but then Chris, uh, he moved from the Valley out to, um, to Arizona, actually. Like, really? Um, yeah, I think he's in Bullhead, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, you know, by the river. And, um, and he, did, he was going to shut down that show. And he called me and said, do you want to take over this one? And um, I said, yeah, that'd be great. I figured I just hated to see another South, Southern California show die, you know. That's, so. that's good that he did that. Unfortunately, and this is where that's really good that he did this, is I see it even here, too. There's a lot of shows that die because the person who's putting them on doesn't want to do it anymore, but they don't want to hand it over to somebody else. Like, I don't. Did you yeah. ever go to the Victorville show? I did. That was the second show I ever went to. Yeah. yeah. See, that was a great that show. That was a great show. And, and that that could have kept on going and there were guys who wanted to continue on and the guy who was mm -hmm. putting it on didn't want to hand it over to anybody and i don't i don't understand that that's nice that crit that that you got to take over a show and keep it alive that's mm -hmm. that's so important i wish more guys would think like that when they're when they're kind of done doing it and i know i've put on many shows and and it gets to a point that it can burn you right down and uh uh hand it over to somebody else don't just kill it so your show then when when i know you had to move it around because of the the things that were going on um yeah. this past year and we didn't get to go that one because it was between going to yours and then the following weekend going to the the uh, nhra show yeah kind of had that plan but you're doing it at a different time this coming year normally the show is the first sunday in may it got postponed. We missed 2020 altogether, even though they had we missed it altogether. And yeah. then May of 2021 was just too soon for them to be certain that they weren't going to get shut down again. So they moved it to October. And unfortunately, we had so many shows right in that one block, you know. There was yeah, there was like the three of them. My yeah. show, then the NHRA show the following week, you know. So it was kind of a tough spot. But we're going to be back on our date. We've already got confirmation with the, the classic Chevy car club that puts oh, on good. the big show. That we're going to be back. So uh, first Sunday of May. And I really want to try and grow the show for this next year. Yeah. You know, even last year doing it, in, doing it in October, we sort of, I was hesitant to really put a lot of effort into it because I didn't know if it was going to happen, you know? Yeah. Um, but luckily we had some people standing by me. Like to me has been a great supporter of all the shows, you know, they helped Excellent. us out with poster show so and they've been really supportive um sponsoring several categories and giving us lots of raffle kits and stuff so um we should have them back on board again and 
um, yeah, it's been fun to try and grow and do different things. You know, when I was at the LA Roaster show, uh, we got Edelbrock involved, you know, they gave us goodie oh, bags wow. with oh, cool. and all the stuff to give away to, to all our guys <laughs> that would show up for the show. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's been cool. That's cool. Well, you're, uh, so that, that's a great time to have your show then, especially, for us out here in Arizona, and by the way, the Model Car Mafia will be invading your show. Awesome. <laughs> Everybody is yeah. already talking about it. So that's a great time for us because in May, it's hot. Nick, to us, mm -hmm. May mm -hmm. in Southern California is really nice and cool. And uh, yeah, I, I years ago uh, um, when uh, Herb, uh, was it Herb Deeks put on the uh, the Western, Western Scale Classic, I think it was? Mm-hmm. And I remember it was during the summer or coming into the summer and we all went out there and all the Southern California guys are going, man, it, this is great, but it's hot. And we're like, hot. Yeah. This is awesome. We were, yeah. we were thrilled. <laughs> so yeah, that's a nice time for us to all come out there, but well, that's why I had you on. This is an opportunity to we try to get your show to be known out there and, and, you know, yeah. everybody, you know, LA is such an easy place to get to. Um, you want to go to some great shows, any Southern California show, but it is really great. But that's a good time for a, for a model show. And then it's on the kind of the opposite end of the year as the, uh, um, you know, uh, the uh, the model car guys doing the yeah. NHRA Museum show. Those are two shows that mm -hmm. I was even asked about them over there in Atlanta when I went there I was asked about the, oh, the Southern yeah. California shows. Yeah, I was uh, actually trying to catch up on your Atlanta videos because that's actually one of my, you know, bucket list shows. That's a cool. show I would definitely want to go to at some point, you know. Highly recommend it. That is a blast. I hadn't – that was so different. <laughs> it was different. I yeah. I, uh, I really enjoyed myself at that thing, and the models were amazing. All the guys that showed up there with their, you know, people that you, you know – it's like i've known clay kemp for years but that was the first mm -hmm. time we met face to face and a lot of the other guys i felt like i'd known those guys for years and it was the first time we all met all the different youtubers and mark batson and, mm -hmm. and tim yeah it it was so much fun and now a bunch of the guys here in phoenix are all saying oh we want to go next year so mm -hmm. there's a whole clan of us here in the southwest i guess they're gonna head that way <laughs> Awesome. You got to jump on board with us, man. We have a good time. I will. I will. It's definitely one I got to do, you know? Yeah. And then get some of them guys to come out to, to your show here. Mm -hmm. And what's the name of your show? Well, it was the SoCal NNL, like I mentioned mm -hmm. when Chris was doing it. But, you know, it's one of those deals where we like to give out trophies and awards and stuff. And I don't know if you've seen it, but the old NNL guys don't really like giving out awards. <laughs> they don't yeah. like shows calling them NNLs when they give out awards. Yeah. So uh, I just decided to change the name. And so now for the last couple of years, we've called it the SoCal Open. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. And so, um, and, you know, if we decided right now, it is kind of an NNL format in the sense that it's not a contest we do have some people's choice awards and stuff like that you know but it's all mostly voted on and we have some awards that are picks like so let's say for instance uh you know one of the clubs like down to scale out here you know they give out an award and they just pick the one they like you know give out an award and i'm mm -hmm. fine with that you know they sponsor it more people get awards more people go away happy you know it's great but um but should I decide to change the format, if I ever want to make it a contest, I don't have to change the name, you know? So That's a good idea. The, the NNL thing, you know, the, like in, in Atlanta, you know, there were awards. There was a top 10 and there was a couple other mm -hmm. awards. And I played with an NNL once. I did one here in Arizona, did the Arizona NNL in 07. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it did pretty good. There were some Son of California guys that came to it. And that one I had like, it was, I think, just like master awards I gave out, I think, mm -hmm. from what I can remember. Um, best engine, best paint, and best of show. And it was all builder's choice type. You had to enter in order to, mm -hmm. in order to be able to vote. And that was, a, that was pretty cool. I know that's been a thing with, with NNLs have evolved over the years. Of, it wasn't 
any competition whatsoever to the point well there's a, an award here an award there and mm -hmm. you know there's some guys that you know they kind of bum out on the fact that there isn't classes and awards and then there's some that yeah they they don't like any awards but uh a nice happy medium is the way I figure. That's how I looked at it. And I like the way uh, yeah. um, Atlanta did it. And it sounds like you were doing kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's kind of a tough situation, kind of, because, you know, um, when you've got ballots, you know, there's, <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, but there's, there's ballot fraud. You know, no, <laughs> come on. No. And uh, <laughs> when I did the L.A. Roadster show, that was great because it was a true people's choice awards. We didn't give any ballots to the builders and we had a constant pool of people walking by. So we gave them awards. Yeah, and, that I can see working, awards, wor that working gave out. ballots and sucked them in, you know. And then these people who, who weren't even familiar with models had to look at every model on the table. Yeah. You know? So it sucked the public in and got them in and got a lot of conversation going. It was really cool. Yeah, uh, that could see where that would work. And we did a show here. I I, I did with with Andy um, for two years. We did a, a show he wants to bring back called the Model Con, and it was everything. And of course, the car. He was kind of whoa, didn't believe me when I said, well, the cars are probably going to be the most there. That's going to blow it out, and it happened. Uh, yeah but we did a uh we had classes we had first second and third but we didn't want to do any judging we had we had builder's choice to in a situation like that we felt keeping it to where you have to enter in order to get a ballot that's one ballot you you know there can't be mm -hmm. really and it didn't seem to be any ballot stuffing by doing it that way and people were pretty yeah. good about oh everybody voting for themselves it, it looked pretty pretty fair because i was one of the ballot counters mm -hmm. that that seemed to work good um but like a lot of people don't realize to do it to do do a show where the nnls are nice is to do a show that has first second and third awards a bunch of classes to have you know a good amount of classes so everything's you know a, a wide variety and you don't have unlike stuff having to be stuffed into the same class and then having to judge. Well, first of all, that's a huge expense. And then yeah. there's this big chunk of time you got to take for the judges to judge yeah. and, and doing the NNLs just make it so much easier and, and, and a little less expensive, make mm -hmm. it more possible to happen. And that's kind of like where I lean to wanting to do an NNL, but I kind of mm -hmm. like your, I like that whole thing of what you're doing and then, kind of dropping the nnl name it makes it easier too you know i tried to like i said want to do uh get get more sponsors involved and you know and yeah. you have to explain what nnl is you know yeah i'm doing a socal nnl what's nnl it gets old trying to explain that you know what does yeah. NNL stand for? you know yeah and Mom quite honestly figured out after a while but yeah the whole nnl thing is it, it stands for it had a meeting that's really just kind of just mm -hmm. between the model it's like a wink wink nudge nudge inside joke exactly. with model car guys so um that's something to think of because i don't know if you've heard yet or know that that i'm planning on doing one here and starting Are a you? new show here and kind of figuring out when to do it and all that stuff and and my leaning mm -hmm. towards it being an nnl it'll probably mm -hmm. more than likely be that but if I, I'm kind of wondering if that's that's a that's a thing to do is maybe just call it something else, and mm -hmm. so you can be flexible. I think even the Atlanta guys, I think they sort of changed the name too. They call it the Southern Nationals now, and I don't think they really reference yeah. the NNL much anymore. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. That's what I noticed about it, and everybody just referred to it as Acme, which is the club. But right. yeah, yeah, they it's more the Southern Nationals. I mean, they still have the little NNL there, but it's just it's mm -hmm. just called Atlanta or Acme, really. Yeah. So it's got its own reputation, <laughs> which is good. Yeah. So that might be that might be a good idea. I kind of I like I like the direction you're going. And we don't have too there's not there's no such thing as too many shows in this part of the country. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those guys back east, they get to have shows every weekend. There's people putting model shows on all the time. We don't have enough out here. 
That's what must be nice. Although I, I was getting to, you know, eight to 10 shows a year That's cool. uh, for a few years there, you know, had to travel a little, you know, that's going to Arizona. That's maybe hitting yeah. the GSL, you know? Um, yeah. And then and we're then losing all that. The, and the IPMS shows, you know? Oh yeah. Did you come out here for the IPMS show that was here? I didn't this last time. No, but you have, yeah, yeah I've come to that. I've never actually been to it because that NNL show, I mean, that IPMS show always used to conflict with the NHRA show. Oh, so really? To stay home. Yeah. Did it? Uh, because uh, I it guess... was always, the show out here was always in early November and I always landed at the same time. But this year they had moved it to uh, October. Oh, that's right. I hope they keep it that way. That's why it worked out for, mm -hmm. for us here is because of that. But like, Atlanta is um, is that weekend of the uh, Model yeah. Zona. So I didn't go to the Model Zona because I was in Atlanta, but I forgot about that because that's right. Because the year that I went to the NHRA show, I didn't, go, you know, I had to make the choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another kinda... reason why I've never been to Atlanta is because it's always landed on the same same weekend as spirit of speed out here so yeah and i i definitely like to see that show grow even more they those guys do a great job that is one of the funnest shows mm -hmm. but and that's where i'm trying to find the perfect spot to do do the one we're going to do because uh um you know i i want i want it to not conflict and not be too close to like mm -hmm. your show and the the museum the nhra museum and you know and then the the guys up in uh, um, Vegas are now starting to talk about doing more shows too. I was talking well, to uh, to Joe there, and mm -hmm. that that would be very cool. That'd be very cool. That'd be a good chance to you know get to your table and buy more stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely, and love to go to Vegas. You know, oh, the gosh. Nationals were great. I really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, I I wish I didn't have to miss that. I'm I'm bummed. I'm going to go to the next one. That one's in Omaha, I believe. Are you going to go to that one? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah. This last one burned me out really bad, you know. Yeah. Close. So trying to go to Nebraska would be a bit of a challenge, I think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I definitely would love to see more shows happen in Southern California and more shows. Well, mm -hmm. I, it, there's uh, you were talking about the Roadster show. Isn't there one yeah. coming up in February and they got a model show there? It's actually, I think, January 28th through the 30th. It's the Grand National Roadster Show mm -hmm. at the Fairplex. Um, yep. And yeah, they do have a model contest there. Are you going to do they have there. vendors there? No, no, no vendors. No, they've got, you know, the car show vendors basically. Mm. And they charge big money to be a vendor there. So, oh boy, all yeah. The car guys couldn't really handle that. Yeah, because we've been all kind of talking about possibly going to that, but uh, not sure. That's that's a great show. show. You know, you is can it? go. It's three days and you can take your models any day. You drop them off and go see the whole show. And then the, uh, the judging is usually on Sunday about, I don't know, two o'clock or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's when they give the awards out. So I think you have to have your models on the table by like noon on Sunday. Oh, OK. So, as long as you get your models on the table by then, you're in. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, there's so much to see because you see how big the Fairplex is. All those buildings there are filled with, with custom cars. Wow. It's just, a, I mean, you're going to wear your feet out going to that one. Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. So where is your show located at then? It's in Chatsworth, which is out in the valley here. Okay. Um, Burbank. And it's at a place called the Rancho San Antonio Boys Home. Okay. And what that is, it's a, it's a, um, it's a home where they take in, you know, like juveniles that have gotten in trouble and instead of sending them to juvenile hall, they get to live at this place and sort of get re rehabilitated, you know? Oh. So, um, everything that we do as far as uh, proceeds goes to them. They give us the venue for free, which is oh, great. Okay. Yeah. And then we raise money through the show and donate it at the end of the show. And it goes to them and it's a really good cause. And, you know, the venue is great. It's in a, it's in a gymnasium on the property and then the property is pretty big. So out outside on the football field is a big car show because the show really is put on by the classic Chevy club of Southern California. 
And uh, so there's there's probably I don't even, I can't even speculate how many cars, but there's a ton of cars out there. Oh, wow. to be seen. So it's kind of the same thing. You can come to our show and then go outside and then all those people flow into the gym and check out the model. So it's it's a pretty good time. That's very cool. Yeah, that sounds like a, a, a good show. Fun to go to. You took over the show. It was being done at that location, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, I seem to that that sounds very familiar because I think I never gone to it, but there was always talk of, hey, we should roll to that one. It's that been a good show. You know, it's it's probably for a while. It could be claimed as the second largest show in California next to the NNL West. Wow, that is um, great. How I mean, many we got 400 models or so, you know, generally uh, nice. this last year wasn't so big because of the date change and, you know, yeah, all, you that, can't all really. those other factors. But. Yeah, you could even see that how it even affected uh, um, the Spirit of Speed show. It wasn't as big. Mm -hmm. the quality though was there. The, as far as the not as many vendors, not as many models, but the, the quality of both was was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So hopefully now this this next year things will be more back to normal, and you guys can do your thing, and the people will start rolling out to them because. That's yeah. nice to see you. I, I noticed I, that you still have that same good core of model car builders there in Southern California that go to all the shows. I saw so many familiar faces mm -hmm. when I went the last time and a ton of new people. Yeah, definitely getting a lot of new people. Yeah, um, that's... that's one of the things I tried to do with my show is, um, you know, I knew there were a lot of guys coming in that were building tuners and low riders and all that stuff. Yeah. So I, I went to them, you know, to help me promote the show because a lot of those guys felt like they weren't a part of the model car community around here, you know, as far as the shows go. Yeah. Um, and so um, I kind of kind of involved them, you know, and asked them to help promote the show. And so oh, it's nice. really helped the turnout. You know? They sponsored a Tuner and Drifters Award. We've had you know, some of the like down to scale sponsor dedicated magazine, you know, sponsored us, you know, and so guys, because there's a lot of, a lot of younger builders in, you know, in those genres. One of the things I wanted to do was get the younger modelers involved in the show, you know, mm -hmm. um, I had some of them tell me, you know, that they just didn't feel like, you know, the shows were really you know, a scene for them, you know, it was a bunch of old guard modelers and it wasn't their thing. So, you know, but I, I got them involved and had them help me do the marketing for the show, you know, create oh, their own yeah. flyers for it. Even, nice. you know, if yeah. they wanted to create the flyers. I said, yeah, make it however you want it, you know, and um, market it to your guys, you know, and uh, they sponsored some awards. Um, you know, we had tuners and drifters and, down to scale and dedicated magazine, you know, all these guys supporting the show. And, and there's a lot of younger builders in, you know, building those genres, you know, they, they like those that, tuners. That is great. Riders, uh, That's great. That's cool that you're doing that. Cause yeah, you don't really see that now you, and you mentioned drift vehicles. I'm starting to see more. I, mm -hmm. I have personally like I, you know, I just like, I love race cars. I Me love too. the engineering of race cars. I used to, Mm -hmm. you know, work on them. So, uh, you know, I just, ha it doesn't matter what it is. And I've, I've never stuck my nose up to what the tuner guys were doing I or the drifting. I love drifting being mm -hmm. a kind of a chassis nerd. I find drifting extremely fascinating. I'm a yeah, huge, huge cool. Vaudgen junior fan. So just, oh, yeah. and I want to build a drift car really bad one of these days. And to, I'd love uh -huh. to see more of those, I haven't seen too many of those models built. And that's cool that uh, there's a whole class of new builders coming on doing those kind of cars. I want to, I'd like to see that. And you have specific classes then, because there hasn't been like a, any show I've seen where there's like a drift class or stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Tuners and drifters, you know, you're starting to yeah. see a little bit more of it around. Um, that's, that is especially great. in this area. But, now, that's yeah. exciting. And what's cool too, is, you know, even though those guys may start out, you know, building that stuff they like to venture off and build other things too you know so oh, you'll yeah. see them building a race car now and then and you know doing something different yeah definitely that's a good you know being open-minded like that and bringing in more builders i mean that's what that's what we we need to do yeah 
Definitely. I know I think that we might have changed the way some of the older guys, you know, that used to go to that show a lot. But, you know, it's a trade off, you know, uh, a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know why they would be like that, because you still I mean, I think, you know, model cars are model cars. It's like, yeah. I don't know. I, I just uh, I just appreciate it's like, you know, I remember there was always kind of a thing about the low riders, you know, years ago where it was like there was the model car guys and then there were low rider model car guys. And me, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not into low riders, but I loved looking at them because uh, the models, mm -hmm. I just like looking at models and I can appreciate, I don't care if I'm into it or not. I appreciate how it was put together, how it was painted and all that. And you just see beautiful, beautiful works of art there. So. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. the paint, the paint on some of those is just amazing. Yeah. You know? Those guys go over the top and farther with that stuff. Yeah, but, a lot of uh, time that's cool and you know having a show like the way you say you're putting it together it's more easier and open have multiple categories mm -hmm. i mean i don't know do you split things up in categories or you just not really you know uh it, it's pretty much nnl style where it's pretty much just an open table but where we have like a tuners and drifters where there's a specific award it's nice to have them all grouped together you know yeah. so be that we looked at um and then we'll have a theme you know for this last year we had um glue bomb challenge was our theme oh we had all those put together in one spot Man, on I, wish I, I wish i didn't that's some of my favorites i love taking yeah, that was a fun one you know <laughs> we had to bring up the before and after pic before picture you know and of course oh, after i love it i love glue bombs i love i love busting them apart and turning them into something nice yeah it's That's cool, to, cool. you can do that you know the yeah and if, be quite spectacular yeah definitely and if you saw like like the atlanta show i was curious to how they did it that was a big thing why going there i was also kind of it was a it was a research trip for me too because mm -hmm. i was figuring i was going to probably whatever they were going to do is how i was going to do the one here um they did have categories so you know, mm -hmm. every all the cars were grouped in their spot. You know, there was street rod and drag cars, and then there was the theme class and all that other stuff. Um, so even though there weren't first, second, third awards, it still kept the models. Mm -hmm. And that I don't know mm -hmm. how they do it at other NNLs, but I kind of like that. I like to keep the models grouped, but, mm -hmm. uh, um, especially when you like you what? say you have an, a special award like that, you kind of want the models to be at the same table. Yeah, for that, definitely. Um, I don't end in West doesn't do it that way. It's pretty much no. like, unless it's the theme, they'll have a theme table. Um, and NNL East, I was there one year and I think it was kind of the same thing, you know, really it's pretty much, pretty much open. Yeah. How I'd did want... they do the judging at, at Atlanta? Like, was uh, it ballot for builder ballot also? Builder, it was builder ballot. And then what they had is they had their top 10 shootout. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they called it. So there was top 10 models picked. And then they had a couple of models. Like there was a, there was a model that was, uh, I think they had a, they had a best of show. And then they had like, uh, there was an award that was kind of a um, memorial reward award for a couple of modelers that had passed that they named it after. So I think that's all that they had for that. So um, I know mm -hmm. that there was a whole, uh, the guy to watch that you can get a real good shot of the award ceremony or whatever it really was, was uh, mm -hmm. over on Throttle Power's channel. He, uh, Tim, definitely did a really great total video dedicated to just the winners. So mm -hmm. um, that was cool. But, and then of that. course the theme award too. There was there was that. So that so that you had the top ten, and then there was three other awards: theme, mm -hmm. best of show, and then the memorial award. That's great. But I, I haven't been to NNL East. I haven't been to NNL West. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I never made it to the you know the original one there up in Toledo. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know how those were ever done. Um, yeah, East was great. Um, I got to tell you a little story about how I got there. It's kind yeah, of funny. let's hear it. Well, I told you at the beginning that, you know, I, I got Don Yost DVD yeah. um, initially. That's how I got started. 
And at the time we had this huge giant Mitsubishi, like 65 inch TV, just overwhelming our living room because my <laughs> wife and I had just got married and I brought the TV. And anyway, I would watch this thing on this TV. And of course the whole family has to see it at the same time because they can't <laughs> avoid it, you know? <laughs> and I don't know if you know, well, well, of course, you know, but Don is a bit of a character in that DVD. Oh. You know? <laughs> He's got a lot of personality, you know? Yeah, he does. So, like, my wife and kids would get just get a kick out of him, you know? And so it was around um, 2015. No, it would have been actually around 2014. Uh, my wife wanted to get me a Christmas present, you know? It's December and she's trying to figure out what to get. So she goes, well, maybe um, I'll look up and see if I can find that guy, the lone wolf, you know, and see if he has a t-shirt or something for sale, you know, that I can get him for Christmas. And so she figures out somehow what his website is, goes to it, writes him an email and said, my husband is a big fan of yours and ah, this and that, you know, and, um, and I want to get him something for Christmas, you know, and I don't know what to get. Do you ever come out here? He writes back and goes, now I've been modeling a few years at this point. He, he goes, I'm well aware who your husband is, my dear. <laughs> and, uh, I, I didn't know him, you know, I had written him a couple emails early on when I was asking questions about how to yeah. paint. You know? I didn't know he actually knew who I was by this point, but he, so anyway, she goes behind my back and he convinces her, he goes, well, I don't, I don't go to shows out in California, but we have this one in NNL East, you should come out here. And um, she goes, oh, okay. So she, uh, he, he points her to the organizers of that show, you know, and she gets a dialogue going with them on how to, you know, get out there, what it's all about and everything. And so that's my Christmas present is NNL East. And she doesn't oh, tell me like the last minute. Yeah. Really good one. You know? So, so she coordinates with Don. And so we end up going out there and um, hanging out with him, you know, and I actually got to meet everybody. I met like Clay Kemp and David Thibodeau and, Jay Savaris and all these guys, you know, that I had been on forums with, but now I got to meet them in person. Yeah, isn't that neat? Today. Yeah, that's it's awesome. That, yeah, that's so cool. And so at the show, they gave my wife an award called the Coolest Wife Award for giving <laughs> me a present better than socks. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, so that's cool, really cool, man. What what a great cool. bunch of guys for doing that. That's so cool. Yeah, that's yeah, neat. I, cool. I know. I I want to go to that show, and it's. It's cool, uh, you know, that's how the going to Atlanta, and now that's definitely mm -hmm. opened my mind. I got to make sure I start going to these shows. I always talked about it, now going to them. And finally, like, same guys you said. Like, Jay, for instance, Jay Severis. We talked afterwards. Mm -hmm. I had always known him, and mm -hmm. and um, it's like Atlanta was so much going on. There were so many guys I wanted to uh, race uh, – um, I can't, I, I can't even think of names right now. It's all going, going fuzzy, but I talked to a bunch of people afterwards that they saw me, I saw them, but we never got to talk and connect it. But uh, yeah, no, the that's why I gotta so go fast, back. Don't they? What's that? Don't they just go so fast? They go way too fast. That's the biggest problem. Just phew, way too fast. Yeah. And it's just so fun. Um, that's why I got to go to the NNL, NNL East badly. But uh, yeah, I'd like to meet Don. I know he's he's a character where there's a there's some guys who don't like him. And it's like, I, I don't I think you're missing the point, everyone. He seems like I enjoy him. I like his mm -hmm. personality. I like how blunt he is. And uh, yeah, I kind of yeah. can get that way, too. And I get some people who don't like me because of that. But uh, now that guy, his 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 models are amazing. Yeah, and, he's, uh, he's great. Yeah, he's my the company I work for actually is based out of Pittsburgh. So I got sent out there one time and I looked him up, you know, and, and uh, got to hang out in his shop. So that very chair that he sits in his oh. videos, I was sitting at that one time, you know. Oh, nice. That's so that cool. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, I uh, he's I, the nicest guy. You know, he'd give you the shirt off his back if you're his friend. You know, that's I can I could tell usually guys like that, that that, you, you know, you can't. You can get an idea of what, like, you know, whoever's watching this, they can get an idea of what we're like. 
but till you really meet us and hang out, you know, mm -hmm. it's, I, or I might be an absolute bigger jerk than I, what I seem right now, who knows, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've always liked Don and, and I always liked what he did and he's made a lot of great points. Some things I agree, I don't agree with most of the stuff. I do agree mm -hmm. with what he's saying. And, and the thing is, 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 and he's, He's trying to show people he builds at a certain level and it, he, who he's talking mm -hmm. to. What a lot of people don't understand is he talking to mm -hmm. the people like you and like me and, and a lot of us who strive to paint at that level or build at that level. If you don't yeah. want to, it's yeah. perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it, yeah. you know, exactly. um, yeah. but if you want to get that level of finish on a model, you have to do it mm -hmm. that way. You're not, I, I know right. there's some people who think that they have are getting that with hardware paint. I'm probably going to get, this is where people get mad at me and hate me, but I don't care. Right. Right. Um, you yeah. can't go to Walmart and buy hardware paint, the cheapest hardware paint and a can mm -hmm. of clear and do that. Or even decanting it into a, it that doesn't work. Um, mm -hmm. You're not going to get that level. You might think you're getting that level, but you're not getting that level of, of pain. Yeah. And that's okay. That, that's the one thing yeah. that I always talk about. That's okay. But for the mm -hmm. people that want to get that level, that's a guy to listen to. Yeah. And that's the thing for me, you know, when I saw his video, that's what I was intending to do. You know, I <laughs> wanted to be that level of builder. That was my choice at that time. And, um, his technique was a great baseline, you know, for me. Yes. Now I don't use enamels hardly ever anymore. And Don still uses them almost exclusively today, yeah. but, but I've learned how to branch off. You know, I can use lacquers. I can use 2k. I can use all this stuff, but I, but if I ever want to, I can go back to that enamel baseline and still get a really nice finish. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. There is a difference between getting the really good quality stuff and kind of getting uh, it. It's just, you, you get what you pay for that old saying, but again, yeah. it's what you strive for. It's what you budgeted yeah. for. I understand yeah. me. I don't mind. And I'm not made of freaking money, <laughs> but I like to, you know, put, put it into my model. I want to create a finish at, yeah. at that certain level. I I'll, I'll fork out the money for it and whatever. I, it's part of the enjoyment to me. But I enjoy even looking at guys that don't strive for that, you know, no. but they have a creative model, you know, something that's really cool, you know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, this is a case in point real quick. I built this model a few years ago for the NHRA show. It's, it's, ah, it's not the most racer. complex model I've ever built. It's a Polar Lights, very simple model but I made it as though the speed racer Mach five was a real race car. So it's got, you know, it looks like you did some weathering on the tires and yeah, the tires are weathered out. I redid the entire interior, I actually flipped the headlights upside down, you know, cause they normally, Oh yeah, that that's way. right. That's right. Yeah. They did Put some side pipes on it, you know, but this isn't the most complex model I've ever done, but it just looks cool. You yeah. Know? So yeah, exactly. Anytime I see guys doing, something like this that's original and different i just love it you know i don't care absolutely if it's a contest model you know yeah exactly it's it's like well you know we talked about frank bennett and and that guy was a you know i was lucky to have frank around being the the award-winning hot rod painter and got mm -hmm. to be his i spent two and a half years being his paint prepper at a at a shop so oh, that, wow. was, that was a wonderful experience and i learned a lot and mm -hmm. uh um he uh he was that way too that guy was never um uh, uh, he didn't have a big head about himself when that and he would see models of guys that i remember there was this one model that he saw that it wasn't done very well it wasn't the the paint wasn't done well but mm -hmm. the idea of the paint job and the car that it was inspired him so much that he contacted the guy well he first he you know just he loved it. He talked to the, you know, or made mention on whatever at the time that was the forum days said something to the guy. And then he personally contacted the guy and said, I really would like to do, if you're okay with it, kind of do your paint job on a car I want to do. Cause that's just your whole design is just so cool. 
And of course, the person he was like, you know, seeing Frank's cars yeah. and stuff like that. He was honored and stuff, and that was really cool. Yeah. But That's I cool. seen Frank get get jazzed up, and, and we all do, really. It's just like a whole bunch of us. You see guys that that might not build at the level that that we do, or guys like um, even beyond. But those dudes come up with some really cool stuff that inspire you. Mm -hmm. and that's what keeps us all going too. I, that's what yeah. I love about the sure. the Facebook groups too. I I constantly see models yeah. that just catch my eye. And mm -hmm. also, the bad thing is it gives me another idea in my head, and then I got to go buy another model <laughs> yeah. and put the other ones aside. Jeez, yeah. But uh, so, what is uh what is the mostly what you build? What what's your do you do you build everything or do you kind of stick to a certain type of models that you build well i i've ended up building everything but you know i i grew up in a racing family so race cars is what i know yeah uh, and so i i like to build race cars but you know things come up you know i mean i yeah. built I built a Volkswagen bus, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> I built, That's I built going the other wheel. direction. <laughs> you know, I built a, a little mini truck for my wife, you know, just different things. You know, sometimes someone gives you a model and you feel obligated to build it, you know. Yeah. Um, but race, car, race cars are my preference, but, you know, you never yeah. know what comes up. So. Oh, that's cool. Now, real quick, what what are all the product lines that you carry and and talk about your website? And and if people can't can't get to you at a show, they can go to a website. Yeah. So uh, the website is called scaleproshop.com. And um, I have ProTech, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I've also I've got a lot of things. I've got Detail Master now, Model Car Garage. I've got Splash Paints. Um, the second product line I picked up was, um, Morgan automotive detail, the, uh, distributors. Mm -hmm. Um, I met Chris when I went to the NNL that year in 2015 and talked to him about it. And he said, yeah, you know, if you want to sell them. So I've been selling those for six years now and they're really a good seller. They're really a good product, which is why, um, I've got scale motorsports for, you know, carbon fiber decals and all that stuff. Oh, I love their product. And I just, um, you know, MS Hobbies folded. I don't know if you're familiar with, with Mark. Um, yeah, very so much so. I bought uh, his remaining top studio inventory and, and then he hooked me up with his suppliers. So I have a, a fresh top studio order coming pretty soon. So I've got oh, all that neat. stuff on the website. So, well, that was uh, great stuff. That's cool. You're grabbing that yeah. line. And I've got some tools out there. You know, I've got a handful of about five things that are sort of some tools that some friends have turned me on to that are just, just kind of things I can't live without now. You know, I've got like a little um, mini rotor tool and I think BG bought one from me in Vegas. Yeah, he did. Um, and um, that was another thing when I was at that show, I was losing my mind and <laughs> I didn't buy anything, but one thing on this, that I did on the video a kit and i wanted to yeah. buy some stuff from you but i was just running around so much and i went yeah. oh that was one thing that is a neat little tool it is yeah and then i've got um even this little thing here called the the dead center you know oh um, yeah so just a little thing to be able to you know start a drill hole it's just so convenient a friend of mine named jay coburn turned me on to this and uh, I said, oh, I got to I got to get more of those. And so I've just been selling them, if nothing else, just to turn people on to them, because, you know, I've always tried to take, you know, the number 11 blade and, you know, try and get the hole started. And, you know, you never get it quite right. Yeah. But with this, thing, you know, you really can get the hole started. If you miss it, you can move it a little bit and, and get a little divot going. And it just I love this thing. So. Just that kind of stuff that I use and that I like is what I'm carrying on the website. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. I need one of those pads because I have something that I use to do something like that. That would be a lot better. Because like with distributors, for instance, if yeah. you want to drill out your kit distributor, you gotta you gotta put a little pilot divot in there. Yeah. Or else you're you're gonna you're gonna go into your finger. <laughs> yeah, the drill just Done. won't go where you want it. Yeah. To. Ooh. In fact, I, I loaned one of these to Rick Salvino when he was working on his Formula One car. And I said, yeah, 
can I get that back? No, you're not getting it back. (laughs) (laughs) I had to order more for both of us. Uh, Geez. Next time I see you, I'm going to have to grab one of those. I know next time I'm going to, I saw you had a lot of neat little things like that and that, that tool. And I'm going to next show that you're at and I'm at, I'm going to be purchasing some of that stuff from you because it's the, the little tools like that, that that's, you know, stuff you don't find at the hobby shop. You don't really, it's not really, uh, yeah. And I love tools. I love grabbing all the neat little stuff that, that help us do our stuff even better, help us with our craft. And it's just, mm-hmm. tools are fun. Tools are just fun. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Well, Art, I want to thank you a ton for coming on. Uh, get promoting your stuff. Thank you. Um, you uh, will definitely uh, talk more. And uh, we'll, uh, on this channel, we're going to help you get that show known. So um, definitely, uh, I got to have myself a flyer for that and I'll put it up and, and let people know. And let's get that show blown up. I'm, I'm all for promoting shows. Yeah, the more shows awesome. and the bigger the shows, the more people that are there, the more friends we make and the more fun we have. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think with our show being on track this year on the right date, you know, we can definitely get a lot of folks out there. Oh, yeah. And get it going and, again. So and it's a cool place to go. You know, Southern California is a nice destination. Even in the summer, it's just it's not like here in Arizona where we are on fire from uh, yeah. April to uh november yeah. to... <laughs> so what? i just want to mention real quick i have yeah. another website called lasky it was really my original website okay. you can get to the store from there which will take you to scale pro shop but uh, i started that website and i've sort of kind of just it's not really the branding i want for the the shop you know so mm-hmm. that's why i started scale pro shop um, but I'm using it a lot for the show. So all the show information is out there. Um, I have um, the calendars out there of all the shows that I'm going to be at, you know, that are in oh, the good. area, that sort of thing. So that's the kind of thing that I have out there. So lastyscale.com. Excellent. Um, if you want to check up on that for our show. Oh, cool. Good. I'll... There'll be uh, descriptions down below for you guys to link on to and i i've put it all over the place you know it it happens <laughs> we, we got all kinds of things popping up uh definitely so anything else you want to say you want to if you got anything you want to just or or even go over again just to make sure everybody knows yeah just hit scaleproshop.com and you'll see everything that's huh? the place yeah right. you, you know i'll Get all your aftermarket parts, your ProTech braided line, all that good stuff. Oh, wow. We Stop didn't really even kits. get it. ProTech. Mm-hmm. That is just my favorite. That braided line. I I, I talked to Charlie about that um, when he told me about that braided line that he specifically designed mm-hmm. it for model cars. And I thought, that's cool. You know, there's all those other products over the years. And then he sent me some and I looked at it. I did that video. I don't know if you've seen it, but I did a yeah, video did. on it. Yeah. And I was, uh, okay. I just gathered up all my other stuff that I've had that for the years. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just gave it all away. I'm just going to use strictly Protex because that was, mm-hmm. that stuff's incredible. If, if you guys haven't really seen is. that video, go check out my video. Cause I show real close of, of the differences and just, and then also compare his line to like a picture of the real stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know how he did it. I got to ask him if he'll tell me and I'll swear. I won't tell anyone that is amazing how he got that, that look. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. It's pretty amazing. I like it uh, a lot better than, you know, I mean, I'm carrying detail master products too, but I'm not carrying their braided line because I just believe in the pro tech so much. Yeah. That, um, that's over the top. Has, they've got excellent fittings, you know, so if you, and, yeah. and they all sort of match up. So, uh, to me, the ultimate setup is the ProTech braided line and the Detail Master fittings, and you can just really get a really realistic looking setup, you know. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to be on your side on that one. Yeah, the Detail Master fittings, they are, those are, I don't think there's anything that's ever topped that. But yeah, the, uh, mm-hmm. but Charlie knocked it right out of the ballpark with that, that braided line. That has been, 
And I remember long when I first got into the hobby, and, you, and I don't know if you remember, and I've talked about this company, there was this company, MSE, back in the 80s, that mm-hmm. they were like the first ones to really go hardcore with braided line and, and spark plug wire, and their stuff was fantastic. And there was nobody mm-hmm. who could do it as good as they did after they were gone and all that until Charlie came around, because that's how I feel about his spark plug wires, too. It's just the best. Yeah, um, it is. But, uh, well, yeah. I don't know if you know this or <laughs> I asked something of every guest at the end of the show to do the closeout. Do you know it? I don't think I do. No, you, you don't. No. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll give you a hint. Okay, it's, it's glue those fingers together and cut that styrene. Right. And here's the producers. <laughs> you want to give it a shot? Uh. Okay. <laughs> putting you on the spot <laughs> it's completely up to you it's right. it's kind right, of here sort of here we go <laughs> all right so keep cutting that styrene glue those fingers together here's the producers perfect mm-hmm.